Good evening, Celebrate Recovery. It is August 3rd. It is a nice Tuesday uh, evening, and uh, glad you guys are with us tonight. We're going to have a little worship, 8 Principles, 12 Steps, and we're going to have a devotional for tonight. It is day number 215 of the year, and tonight, uh, the, the title of tonight's devotional is Positive Habits. So enjoy worship and all that, and we'll be right back. Yeah. 
Good evening, everyone. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I struggle with codependency, and my name is Kathy. I miss you all and hope to see you soon. I'm going to read the eight principles and their biblical comparisons. Principle one, realize I'm not God. I admit that I'm powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing, and that my life is unmanageable. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. Matthew 5, 3. Principle two, I earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Principle three, consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Happy are the meek. Matthew 5, 5. Principle four, openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart. Matthew 5, 8. Principle 5. Voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask Him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Matthew 5, 6. Principle 6. Evaluate all my relationships. Offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others except when to do so would harm them or others. Happy are the merciful, Matthew 5, 7. Happy are the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9. Principle 7. Reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and His will for my life and to gain the power to follow His will. Principle 8. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires, Matthew 5, 10. Thank you. I love you, and I hope to see you all very soon. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Doug. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I struggle with sexual addiction. Um, I'd like to uh, go over the 12 steps with you. Uh, step one, we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors and that our lives had become unmanageable. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Romans 7, 18. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Philippians 2, 13. Step three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. That's Romans 12.1. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Lamentations 3.40. Step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Step six, we are entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. James 4, 10. Step seven, we humbly ask him to remove all of our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Step eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Do to others what you would have them do unto you. Luke 6, 31. Step nine, we made direct amends to such people whenever possible except when to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Matthew 23, 24. Step 10, we continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 
Colossians 3.16. Step 12. Having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently, but watch yourself or you also may be tempted. Galatians 6, 1. And that's the 12 steps. Uh, remember, uh, the steps will work if you work the steps. Have a great evening. Thanks. All right, as I said tonight, the devotional is Positive Habits, day number 215 of the year. And tonight's Bible verse is from Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. Now we begin recovery by focusing our attention on ridding ourselves of negative habits. We then learned that lasting change comes only through God's power. As the days pass, we became more and more free from our old hurts, hangups, and habits. We make fewer poor, unhealthy choices, and we grow closer to the one and only higher power, Jesus Christ. Reaching that point in our recovery is a great accomplishment as well as a dangerous place to be. It's a mistake to say that we have arrived. Unless we keep moving forward, we risk relapse, which can actually leave us worse off than when we began. We must always be hard at work making positive choices and adding new healthy habits to our daily lives. And even more important, we must work to keep our relationship with God fresh and vibrant. We can do this by reserving a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer. The more we know God and His will for our lives, the more we fortify ourselves against relapse, strengthen our relationship with God, and become empowered to reach out to others through our words and example. I cannot stress how important it is to have an ongoing daily relationship with Jesus. Uh, I find that if I'm not very good and consistent with my daily time with God, I become a worse version of me. And I tend to become more selfish, more uh, more bitey, more like someone I don't want to be. But when I spend time with God daily, I find that he calls me out sometimes on my behaviors and I'm quicker to take action to remedy it or make an apology or whatever it is. And also, I find that it helps me to focus on what really matters in life. So there's a lot of amazing more reasons I did not list today about why it's good for you and I to spend a daily time with God. But may I encourage you today to grab your Bible and, and get on your knees today and spend time with God. And I promise you, it'll be the best investment of your day. It's not closing a deal. It's not doing anything else, but you spending time with your father and me doing uh, the same thing. So uh, let's all do that together and watch what God does in our lives, but also the lives around us. Uh, we minister out of what God is doing in our lives. We help others by that overflow. And we find that we rely on God's strength more than ours, both for our benefit and others. So uh, be encouraged today. Keep going. If you feel like you've messed up, uh, you're in good company. There's many people that have, but don't stay down. That's what makes us uh, a failure. But getting up and trying again and keep moving forward, that's what counts. And God can absolutely work with a spirit that says, I will try or I will do my best rather than I just don't want to or I can't or I'm indifferent or I got more important things to do. Uh, those things kind of hurt our relationship. So today, let's do those things and give God that top spot. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for loving us when we're at our best and our worst. Thank you that you've got such an amazing plan for our lives and it's found in seeking you. It's found in doing your will. And uh, God, well, none of us are perfect, but if we get back up and keep trying, that's something that's uh, going to benefit our lives so much more than if we just lay down and let life happen. But instead, following you and chasing you as best we can. I pray that you'd help us to do that and more. Whatever you're calling us to do, God, may we say yes to you and your plan. I pray you'd help us to heal and recover in all the ways that we need. And it's all found in you because you are the catalyst. It's not us, it's you. We need your power, your strength, your mind, your love and so much more. We thank you for tonight, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Enjoy the uh, small group questions, and hopefully we'll see you in person soon if you're not already joining us. And if you are, and you've just taken uh, this week, you could not show up, we'll see you when you return. You guys have a great night. We'll see you next Tuesday online. Keep coming back. Good night. Hi, everyone. It's Julia. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I struggle with codependency and eating disorder and exercise addiction. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close out this time with us in our serenity prayer. So if you'll pray with me. 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. And here are your smarter questions for tonight. What impacted you from tonight's devotional? In principle five, you need to ask God to help you identify the defects of character that you need to work on first. List the changes that you want to ask God to help you work on now. Will you work on them? And finally, number three, list the actions that you need to take to begin working on the defects of character that you listed in question two above. You can look at categories like defect of character I need to stop doing and the things that I need to start doing. That's all for tonight. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. We will see you next Tuesday night. Have a great week.